I've made a lot of progress cleaning up the chassis. This lower chassis was especially nasty. Only a few little specks of rust remaining down in here. Eventually I will repaint these transformers. Also got uh, a good portion of this cleaned up. Most of it still has its original cadmium plating which is in good condition but here and there it wore through and we got some little bit of rust and pitting so I've been getting that off. Also finished mounting in the new electrolytics. I'll try to glue the cans down over these when all is said and done. And I've remounted the tuner. Still has pretty good <laughs> clunk to it, but it rotates more freely than it used to. But the bigger question is, will it work any better? So what I'm going to do is reconnect it and pop in, I think, a little bit of CRT, one of those 5AXP4s, and fire this thing back up. I'm going to repopulate the tubes, too. Assuming... Okay, I got all the tubes back in place. I've connected the two chassis together. I've got a signal source hooked up and I have my little Tough CRT installed. Reason I don't want to reinstall the full size CRT is I still want to do a bit more work on this main chassis. It's easier to do with the little guy in there. Now, I've done a bit of work between replacing the electrolytics, got the new power resistor in there, and worked on the tuner. Let's hope I got everything wired back up right. Tubes are lighting up, always a good sign. Oh, crap, I just realized I oh <laughs> got a raster, I just realized I forgot something. There's no speaker hooked up. That's another quirk about these sets that can trip you up if you're not aware of it, is that you can have the speaker disconnected, even though it's a field coil speaker and it's part of the power supply filter, and the set will still power up. That's because we've got dual power supplies. The main supply has a dedicated filter choke on the chassis. It's the lower supply voltage that uses the speaker. So we got a raster momentarily, even though this field coil was not hooked up, hooked up to the circuit. Alright, let's try that again. This is our channel, it's channel 13. Alright, both very good signs. We got noise out of the speaker, we've got a messed up raster. Alright. Now the focus is going to be horrible because these little test CRTs are self-focusing. But that gets messed up by the big focus electromagnets. Try adjusting the focus control and maybe can get it better. That's uh, probably as good as it's going to get. It's also a little bit loose in there. I have it propped up by this roll of tape here. Alright. So the sound is still crap. Well, actually, no. Nah. I just there's just the fine tuning, and there's background noise, but it seems to be louder than it used to be. Considerably louder than it used to be. So that's a good sign. Now, something else is that I think I could only. Well, actually, I know that I could only receive signals to one of the two channels uh, three and four and I think I'm on three right now so let's put four I'm gonna flip this box over to channel four that uh, looks sort of promising she's Batman <laughs> still kind of crappy though just taking a tuner around well, you know what? I'd speculated early on that maybe there's something wrong with the coils, and they do pop out, so... At some point I will try, try popping coils out of another set and put them into here. 
But that, uh, that is surprising. Uh, now I can slide a tool down in there and tweak the local oscillator. But I think I tried doing that before, but I'll give it another shot. What the heck, I've got a tool right here. Now I noticed on these 30A1 chassis it's a little bit trickier than on them later chassis to do the oscillator adjustment because the fine tuning disc gets in the way. So you've got to rotate the fine tuning until a little opening appears right there. Now I can adjust that coil. I finally got the tool down in there and can make adjustments, but it's really not helping a whole lot. I just couldn't get channel 4 to come in any better, so now I've gone back to channel 3. This is the best sound I can get. But there is one positive thing. Before when I would rotate the fine tuning control, there was a certain spot where I would lose the signal entirely. That doesn't happen anymore. And the volume is definitely louder. It just sounds terrible, but it is louder. I just finished replacing the electrolytics on the power supply and amplifier using the same techniques that I used on the upper chassis where I just sliced the cans open and replaced the caps by drilling little holes through the base. So let's see what difference that makes. Also read the, um, to the owner's manual on how you should set up the, these controls and they say to put the contrast fully counterclockwise and then increase the brightness until you get an image and then start turning the contrast up. So that's what I'm doing. Alright, oh, I tell you right away, the picture looks a lot brighter than it did. Excellent. Contrast seems a lot better too. And uh, I'll dig up that modification for the uh, retrace suppression so I can get rid of these lines. And how about that sound? Definitely better. I hardly have the volume turned up when I can hear it. Quality's not great though. Definitely louder. So it's a really good picture too, and I'm hoping it uh, will get even better when I do an alignment. Because this set has a pretty good IF with stagger tune, staggered uh, amplifier sections, or staggered coils rather. Right? It's a nice wide response. I went through the alignment process as best I could and it definitely seems to have improved things. 
bit of buzzing in the sound, but uh, definitely a lot more volume. Now I say as best I could because I discovered um, that the core in this transformer is broken. The, the top uh, little section of the slug is, is broken and rattling around inside there, so that's not good. Also, I was puzzled that a couple of these transformers, uh, especially these two, didn't have much effect when I tuned these slugs. So, uh, I don't know. <laughs> but what I can say is, the test patterns look pretty good. So, I'm going to feed in a regular audio video signal and see what we get. Now, what I might end up doing with this tuner is just swapping the whole thing out. Because I happen to have another one here that's... I believe I, the identical model, 9482, and this one turns better, and uh, the core is not broken inside the top of this transformer, so that might just be the simplest way to go. I was working on pulling out the old tuner once again when something kind of odd happened. I was unsoldering one end of the wire that goes up into the tuner from down in here and as I was working this end loose the whole wire just fell out. And if you look at the end that was inside the tuner there's no solder on the end of the wire. So <laughs> I don't maybe that was a factory mistake and they just wrapped this around a terminal post and never soldered it in. I don't know but uh, that sure couldn't have been good and that may very well be why I was still having trouble when I would rotate the fine tuning that I would hear kind of a crackle and uh, I'd lose the picture for a moment. It might have been this wire losing contact. However, since I've come this far and I've only got one wire left to disconnect, I am still going to pull this out and put the, pull, put the other tuner in. If for no other reason than the channel rotator works better. Oh, and of course we've got that damaged um, slug, but hmm. And I'm really curious to know where this came out of. Of course, I don't even know where this attached, so I'd have to dissect, pull this drum back out, and compare it to another tuner to figure out where the heck this is even supposed to go. But, uh, you know, that may very well have been the problem all along. I finished swapping out the tuner, so let's see if it's actually going to make any difference. Well, that's certainly a promising sign. A nice sharp picture. We've got some sound. It's not great, but. Hmm. Really nice sharp picture. Sound. So, now I'm really starting to think that I've got to look at maybe a bad mica cap inside some of the uh, audio IF cans. I don't know, there was another issue where I couldn't get channel 4 to work before, so this is channel 3. Switch to channel 4 and switch over my just fine all right great so now I got both channels three and four working cool just lousy sound all right <laughs> bit by bit step by step getting closer and closer to a fully working side. So, where to start looking for the poor sound quality? Well, one of the things I find frustrating on this set is uh, something I haven't encountered before, and that's the way this tuner works. So, here's where the signal comes in, and then we've got our oscillator and mixer, and we get the 
product out of it, but they actually split it as a separate pickoff coil, trap, you might say, for the sound, and that's the green on top there. And then there's a separate wire for the video. What I've seen, I think, in every other set that has the split uh, carrier is that there's one output from the tuner that goes to one um, IF tube and on the output of that is a trap for the audio. This the traps inside the tuner. Which wouldn't be any big deal except that it's all inside of one can. There are two coils and two slugs inside this can. One for the video one for the audio. But uh, the problem comes in how you actually tweak this. A lot of these coils are dual coils too, for the IF stages. And there's an adjustment on top, and there's an adjustment on bottom, on the bottom for the other coil. On this, because the tuner is well, kind of closed under there, you can't get at the other side of this. So they actually have a hole drilled through the top of the upper core so you can get down with a special tool to adjust the bottom core. Well, I don't know what kind of tool that might be. The top slug I can see is slotted and I've got a tool that I can adjust that with. The only tools I have that are small enough to go through that hole drilled down through the center end with a hex. Something like one of these. But it doesn't seem to be engaging in anything when I use that. I think it might be slotted. Uh, I suppose I could sacrifice one of these tools and, and file down the end. Or I could fabricate it, I don't know, I'll grab a chopstick or something and whittle it down and make a tool and get down in there. Now, uh, luckily I don't think that is the problem because I've had the same problem with both tuners. And the odds of both of those slugs needing adjustments and you know and both tuners seems a little unlikely. Now the output of that goes uh, I think over to this side. I believe this is the audio. I think there's a wire that goes straight out to pin one on the six AU six. Just this green wire here. Let me go through some stages. So that's where I wanna start investigating. So we've got two IF cans after we come out of the tuner in this first tube. And inside of each of these cans is one Mikey cap. 30 picofarad in the first one, 35 in the second. So those are where I'm thinking we might have some leakage because we do get some sound. And when I tweak these coils I can improve or uh, decrease the sound volume. So in other words, these coils are peaking like the, uh, apparently like they should be. Uh, now there could also be a problem with these caps here, which I think are mostly ceramic. I can double check those resistors. I can double check the tubes. And uh, there still could be a problem back in the tuner, but like I said, I've gone through two tuners now, so I'm kind of thinking that's that's the least likely source of the problem. Now I can also start injecting some signals too. I'm pretty darn sure the audio amp's fine. But to, to make sure I could inject a uh, signal right here into the audio amp. Let's see how good that sounds and I can start working my way back too. Unfortunately, I don't think I have any generators that can do 21.5, 21.25 megahertz that's FM modulated, however. So I don't think I can inject a signal right here. I can only do amplitude modulation, not frequency modulation, unfortunately. So I think I'll have to rely on putting in a test signal up here. I just took out the first sound IF can and popped open the cover and there is that mica cap totally exposed to the atmosphere and you get that silver migration and get mica disease can't really tell if it has it just by looking at it can't be a dead short of course otherwise this thing wouldn't work at all 
So one simple thing to do is to clip that out and put in a standard mica cap. It's not the kind of thing you can really test so easily because it's kind of integral to the coil and with the coil resistance being in parallel with it you can't measure the capacitance. I suppose I could try to unsolder one of those wires and check it for capacitance and leakage. Well, yeah, I guess I can give that a try. We'll see how it see if one of those wires comes off easily. I carefully unsoldered one end of the coil that was in parallel with that mic cap so I can test it again with my solar tester. So I've got it in the paper slash mica position. First, let's see if we can get a capacitance reading. Should be 30 picofarads, which is going to be kind of at the lower end of what this thing can do. Let's see. Hmm, huh, no, no eye deflection all the way around the dial. That doesn't seem right. So I'll pull out a 30 picofarad modern cap to check. Uh, for comparison in a moment, but now let's check for leakage. Huh, look at that. Leaky on the lowest range. This would be good for a few hundred volts easily. So we may have just found the problem. This thing is really leaky. Well, I may have a little problem here. I looked through my mica caps and I don't have a very extensive inventory on hand because these things are kind of expensive and all I could find was a 39 and I need a 30 but anyway we can check this out to show how one should work so get a little strange and there we go get a nice strong eye open whereas we didn't get any eye opening with that original cap and now for leakage, there shouldn't be any across the board because this is rated for 500 volts. So no leakage. That's how my cap should test. All right, now I did happen to order a bunch of mica caps uh, recently. I can't remember the name of the place, but I'll tell you when I pull them out. And anyways, they had a bunch of them for reasonable prices, so I ordered maybe a dozen of what I thought would be values I might need in the future just maybe I've got one in there I can use Alltronics was the name of the place I was trying to think of A-L-L-T-R-O-N-I-C-S they sell surplus electronics so I ordered up a bunch of goodies because I got a tip from one of you guys that they have seven pin sockets like the predicted TVs use, and they're really cheap, so I ordered up a bunch of those. And while I was at it, I saw what else they had. I got some Sprague Atom electrolytics, and some nice higher voltage, like 1600 volt film caps, some big old high voltage cap, 6.5 kilovolt rated. But anyways, what we care about are these, the mica caps. See 120, close, but nope. 47s, getting closer, but not close enough. 110s, I know I got those for Philco's because they commonly use those. But still not what we're looking for. 470, nope. And 500, no, 150. Dang. Well, I guess I'm going to be ordering some mica caps, and I might as well go ahead and take out the other IF can, act for that matter. I might just go ahead and take out all the IF cans, because if you recall, I mentioned that there was a power resistor inside of the video IF cans. I measured them. They're all 20 plus percent high. So, <laughs> and I got a few other Admiral sets like this to restore, so why don't I just order up like a good half dozen of each type of mica value. I might need and uh, luckily Mauser ships quickly so uh, if I order from them, although they're a little pricey when it comes to mica caps, but I should get them in two days, maybe three days at the outside. 